Hello YouTube, this is Charlie with Beach Gold Assay. Hey, I wanted to uh, make a little bit of a follow-up video to the last video on these uh, MCM fake silver bars. Um, I had a lot of interest on that video and um, I'm really kind of pleased with all the feedback I got. I liked all the questions and, everybody, the, and everything that everybody had asked and I kind of wanted to go over a bunch of those questions and also show some of the tests that I did not do in the first uh, video that I did. Um, I'll throw a link up to that previous video, but um, I'm just going to basically be exploring a lot more tests. I'm going to do the ring test. I want to do the magnet test, not the slide test, but just the regular magnet test. And I'm also going to show you the specific gravity test um, and where we can actually truly prove that the that it's not silver um, using water and the, the water displacement weight. And then I also want to show the um, Sigma Metallics machine and show you how that machine also would help you rule out bad silver um, and maybe a couple other things but um, for now I um, just wanted to go ahead and show you the ring test I'll be right up so for this test I've just got a couple of not so nice silver eagles that are genuine on the right side and then I've got the MCM bars that are actually fake on the left side and I wanted to show the um, difference in the rings that the actual uh, coins make when you touch them together and to do this, you can simply put them in your, in, your, in your fingers and tap them against each other. And you can hear a very distinct ring that it, that it makes when you tap them together. And see how that sounds. And then when we put the, the two uh, fake bars together, you can see it's a very different, it doesn't seem to resonate as much. And it's just kind of dull. And, and it's a very a high, much higher pitch too. So that's a very good way, once you've kind of tuned your ear to that, to, to be able to, to kind of throw up a red flag for bad silver. And when we tap them both together, you see how we get a mixture of the sounds. So that's a, a good way to know, maybe if you carry a, a, a piece of silver with you, um, maybe an option if you, if you like to use that as a method to verify your silver. But you get, hitting them together, you'll see that it's a mixture of, of sounds now, versus if you just had the two silver pieces together very common sound and then just the two fake bars together is a much higher pitch and less resonating. The next test I want to show is the magnet test. Uh, this one's going to be pretty quick and simple because the, the reason why we didn't show it in the, in the uh, first go round is that it's just not magnetic at all. It's a, it's a very copper brass core so that's also not a magnetic metal. And we use very strong magnets to, to you know, weed out fake coins. This is a fake piece dollar. Um, and so again, you can see that um, they're just not even slightly magnetic, not even the slightest bit. So if you'd have been using that test, you might have thought this is real silver. I did want to talk about a couple of other things with the bars. You know, if you ever come across MCM bars, you can, you can look at... Uh, different things to rule out the these particular fakes because there are some differences with these bars versus what uh, the, the real legitimate MCM bars are. The first thing is that um, the uh, real MCM bars would say one troy ounce on there and that's a general generally a good rule you'll want it to say one troy ounce. We know that these bars don't weigh one troy ounce or one regular ounce or 1.07 to 1.09 uh, troy ounces and you know 1.17 to 1.19 regular ounces so they're very very overweight no matter what um, but the, that is something that in this specific case will rule this one out as being a real coin they also outline a couple of things as well um, that the, the this looks a little bit different on the the real bar versus the fake bar it's a much cleaner look on the real bar um, that's a little bit more subjective but um, that is another thing that you can use to um, kind of at least try to weed these out if you ever see them. Um, one of the uh, comments that we received is that the silver bars never have trademark or registration marks or anything like that. And in fact, the, the MCM bars do have those. So I would not say that if you just see, you know, trademark or registered marks or things like that, they're actually just saying that they're logos and their names are registered and trademarked so I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say that that's going to be a negative thing against these bars 
Um, but but yeah, I would just um, look at the, the fact that it says, it does not say Troy ounce, and then this area right here. And this is information I found on fakebullion.com. You can actually look this up too and see this particular bar and the differences that they outline. And while we're on the, the subject of weight, I wanted to clear some stuff up. A, a few people had commented that uh, Troy ounce or an ounce is 28.4 uh, grams, which uh, regular ounces, um, basically that, um, but a, a troy ounce is actually 31.1 grams. And so that's something that you need to know if you're actually looking for silver and, and you know, you want to verify the weights of things. And if you look at, like, uh, a silver eagle, for instance, you'll see that it weighs 1.005. And you can see 1.01 up to 1.015, but anything higher than that, you're throwing big red flags at that point. And if we look at these bars here, you'll see that... Um, very heavy and they vary a lot too they're very kind of all over the place 1.07 we're saying one one uh, 1.09 we have all over the place with these weights so and then to show it in grams if we look at the um, grams of these you want a one ounce bar to be 30 31.1 to 31.2 maybe if we look at these you'll see 31.2 and even up to 30 31.2 three maybe four even because some later later silver eagles were actually made a little bit heavy and I think that's due to how many they were making but but um, if you look at the tolerances you'll see that it's even a little bit heavy but but when you compare it to you know this bar you'll see that it's at you know 33 you know that's just way way off that's grossly overweight and so that would be a red flag I would step away from it and and just avoid these bars altogether. Okay, so I've got a specific gravity test set up here, and basically just have a container of water that is teared out on the scale so that when we place the sample in the water without touching the floor of the container or the sides, that it gives us a weight of the displaced water. And you can see here that we're looking at, you know, 2993. It's kind of hard to get an exact number here, but, um, we're looking right around three, and that's what I've seen with uh, good silver. This is a good sample bar. It's just a, a regular silver bar that's a known good. And you'll see that it goes negative because you do pull some water back out, but um, and you'll have to tear it when you do another test. But if you look at our number here, we're getting about a three, you know, somewhere between 295 and 395. Okay, so the next part is that we're going to show the, the bar that is not good, the MCM bar, and put it inside this, the water here, and we'll see how much it displaces. We're getting about four grams. And it's kind of hard to get it to where it doesn't move at all, but once it's fully submerged and not touching anything, we're getting four grams. And uh, we'll do some math here in the next step, and I'll let you know why the, the answers are different and um, what they mean. Okay, I want to go over the results that we have. Um, this is the real silver bar. We'll see here, this is just a one ounce, I think it's a, a Highland Mint, one ounce bar. Um, it was the first one that we did. Um, the actual weight of the silver bar is 31.26 grams. The water displaced, meaning the, the reading that we got when we put the uh, silver bar in the water to, uh, on the scale uh, was three grams. And then what you do is you take the actual weight of the bar and then divide it by the displaced water to come up with the result. And then when you look up the specific gravity of pure silver, and you can look it up for pretty much uh, any metal any metal like this, um, you can then reference how close your results were. And in this case, you can see the pure silver is at 1049. And um, that's a very close result of just 0.07 difference, and that could be accounted for scale error, scale rounding. It could be the little tiny bits of of uh, uh, you know fishing line that we used it could be any different you know uh, any bunch of different things but that's actually a very very close number and I would consider that a, a valid a valid result for good silver okay when we look at the result of the the MCM bar that we know is not real uh, the weight of the bar was 33.25 grams and the water displaced was 4 grams and to um, find the specific gravity, you take 33.25, which is the weight, and divide it by the water displaced, and you get 8.31.
And what I did was, is I looked for something that was close to the specific gravity that we were getting, and I found 8.96 being uh, copper. And that is kind of a big difference, but um, it could be mixed with other metals. We don't know that it's pure copper. It could have tin. It could have um, any number of things in there that would uh, cause it to, to have a slightly different specific gravity. But the, the, the point is, is that when you do the, the specific gravity and you come up with something like 8.31 and you're looking for a specific gravity of 10.49, which is the specific gravity of silver, you know something is wrong. You know that it being off by that much, there's st something definitely wrong with this bar. All right, I want to show the Sigma v Metallics Precious Metal Verifier Pro. This is used for validating coins, um, high, high content silver, gold, platinum, and palladium. You can look at all those. Right now, it's configured to look at silver. And I want to show you just basically what a, a known good uh, one ounce silver eagle does. We look at it on the thin, and we look at the um, um, result there, and we see that it's in the, the orange. I've seen that typically with this, it is showing that anywhere between the kind of yellowish orange into the green, that's a valid valid test. The most important thing is to look at the two numbers. One, you need to make sure that the the numbers are the same on the, the surface as well as all the way through. Um, and then you also just want to make sure that these numbers too are very close to each other because that's telling you that the metal is the same on the surface as it is all the way through the coin. Those are the two most important things and this is just a guide to give you some level of, of, of how it compares to other, other coins. And just with just like with everything else you're gonna have a certain comfort level with things you might look at that and say that this is in the orange that's not good that's bad but I've tested a lot of different metals known goods known bads and I just know that that where this device tests and shows it in the orange means it's that it's a good thing with gold it's a lot more clear it shows specifically in the green or not in the green um, but I just noticed that that the way it works with silver is a little bit differently now we take this particular one ounce, um, the MCM fake bar, then we put it on the machine. You can see that that is very clear, that it's gone way off to the right side. You see that the numbers are pointing to the right, and you look at the, the numbers themselves, they're in like the sixes. Uh, silver is always in the ones, so if you have this device and you're, and you're seeing that, and you look at this and you see something at six, especially when it's pointing to something way off the scale into the red, then that's definitely a red flag. You know that that is not a real piece of, of silver. And now one of the other great features about this particular one over the regular verifier is that it helps you uh, understand the dimensions that are allowed within the piece that you're testing. So let's say you wanted to take a look at that and you'll see that we get the same result. And then we hit the measure button. What that does is it uh, asks you what, whether it's going to be round or rectangular. And then it basically makes a little bit of an area where you're supposed to put the bar and you put it where it's lined up to where the light has come on, then right up against that and then you try to see if you're within the right area. And if you, if you look at this, you can see it wants you to be in this particular area right here. So that is a big red flag. You're way outside. So the bar is just much bigger than it's supposed to be. So that's a very clear way. And I'll show a good response now. If we take our good one ounce bar, put it on the tester, you can see our response. Then we hit measure. Same thing, it's rectangular. And then we put it into the line here. And you can see that it gives you this little bit of a, a green area to fit in. And so you can see that you, you can see that the green, hopefully on the camera, you can, but you can see that the green it's well within the green area. So that's a way of, of another way of verifying that its physical properties are what you would expect as well. Very useful feature. All right, well that about does it for this video. Um, again, I wanted to thank everybody for watching. I, I got a lot of feedback on that last video. I enjoyed making it, I enjoyed reading comments. So I would love to hear your feedback on this one as well. Um, if you have any questions, I try to answer as many as I can. Um, and I look forward to making more videos. So if you like like this one and want to see some other fake things tested or just other coins and, and things like that in general, then uh, please subscribe and um, like the video. And again, if you have any questions, leave them, leave them in the comments below. I will try to respond to as many of them as I can. All right, thanks. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.